There are things I need of you, things you may not understand and may not wish to do, but please do not make the same mistakes I did. My father, Howard, deserted me before I was born. I could claim the loss of my mother, and the letter I received after her funeral blinded me to what I had to do. It will be a lie, human nature still on my downfall. Hey everybody, welcome to Penumbra Overture. So this is a pretty horror game that's been recommended to me. So I thought I thought I would give it a try. So let's jump right into it. My story began in February, year 2000. For my part in this allegory, I'm not going to make the same mistakes my father made. Howard vanished from my mother's life before I was even in it, so when he sent me a letter a few days after mum's funeral, it was the first I'd ever heard of him. But he was dead. Writing from beyond the grave must be a genetic habit in my bloodline. His letter contained a key, instructions, pleas for forgiveness. I figured the dead don't have much use for absolution, so I turned to his prophetic class in which he inexplicably expected to come any day. Clearly averse to explanations, my father preferred to leave directions to a bank on Mayfair I'd never even heard of. In that bank was a safety deposit box in his name, and myself as executor. Of course, I went, as he knew I would. I discovered that despite the evidence, he'd been legally declared dead almost 30 years ago so the old book and collection of notes I found had, in the eyes of the law, been mine all this time. My father's instructions were to burn the documents, raise no further questions. But that was his error. No man's immune to the shameful trappings of curiosity, and my humanity got the better of me. The university I taught at was world-renowned for two things, physics and linguistics. I represented the first, and the man who stood for the second was stumped by my recent acquisition. The book was indecipherable. The notes, however, showed a location somewhere in uninhabited northern Greenland. It took me almost a year to book the last flight I'd ever taken. As I watched civilization disappear along with Heathrow, I realised my father had disappeared three decades ago, almost to the day. And I considered in turn what it was that I was leaving behind. We landed on a strip of ice a few feet wide, and within minutes I was pulling away on chartered boat, beginning a 12-hour journey that would lead me into my past. Alright, green down there we come. Let's go. But hey, we almost died. I better store my gear. I may be far from home, but chances are I can still pick up things up. And I can take a closer look at things using right mouse. Check Daniel. <laughs> Tower. Flashlight. Okay. I gotta light the light. It's it's pretty it's pretty for for a pretty whole game. I think it was 2008. I may be wrong on that, but it, it should be around that time. Okay. Okay. Batteries. Gotta have some batteries. I guess it's a glow stick. Gonna put that here. Flashlight here. Um. Journal. Okay. Notebook. Press N. Okay, so we have a to-do list, notes, okay, let's get out. As I stepped off the boat, setting out into the blizzard that had formed around me, I realized how utterly devoted I'd been to the discovery of my father's past. I had no idea what to expect. Soon enough, my concerns were justified. I don't know whether I lost my orientation or my spirit. 
first, but I lost my feeling in my next in my extremities soon after. And I knew hypothermia was setting in. I started looking for shelter. So Co, don't know where I am. I need shelter soon. Into the snow we go. My entire head went down a, a long time ago. I can, I can still hear the wind roaming past. <laughs> stone. Fuck you, Stone. I clearly can hold the entire eye. Yeah, we know that. We figured that out. I don't need care. It's frozen shut. Need something to break in. Let me guess. I've stone ice is too thick Oops. sorry about that come here Stacy fuck you there we go uh, yeah so strong spin the wheel Spin the wheel! Let's go. Oh, nope. There we go. Did it open? Not yet. Ah, there we go. Down the rabbit hole. If I fell that far and survived, I'll talk, look around, maybe I did not. Where is this place? I'm gonna need something to break that. Let's look everywhere. Oh, how oh, convenient. Let's see, okay. Okay. Should be good to use a hammer. Oops. Okay. Let's look around a little bit. Never mind. <laughs> Let's go in there. No. <laughs> so strong, man. Okay. Aya. Read that shit. I'm sure nothing can go wrong crawling in a the whole tunnel thingy. It's probably all fine. Okay, we have a new room. Oh shit! What the fuck? Nah, 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 like some kind of energy mechanism. I thought there's a hole in the center and no way to operate it. Let's see what we got. Bad luck. Bad luck. Still run? Maybe? Oh! Yep! So smart. Let's go. That's 
Tell it what happened by hand to the people in on. Oh shit, yes. Keep something in, huh? Okay. Spin the wheel. Even if it's not a wheel. Spin. Okay. Don't know what this leads or what's waiting for me, but unless I want to starve to death, it's my only option. Besides, maybe this place has something to do with my father. I'm sure it's fine. Whatever I was descending into, it was 100 feet below ground, protected by two solid metal hatches, located in a remote Arctic wilderness and buried beneath the snow. I, don't, I did not know what to expect, but it made me feel something I had felt since I was a child. I would never given it much thought before, but I realized that whole entire society is network of safety nets, emergency services at the end of a phone health and safety in the workplace, friends, family, lovers, are there if something goes wrong, part of carefully designed structure to prevent all but the most mundane of emotions. Once again, I felt like it, I did when I was in school, surrounded by a closing ring of older kids, knowing anyone that might help me, friends, parents, teachers, were too scared or too far away. By the way, I'm sorry if my English sucks. Um, to my defense, I'm French-speaking Canadian, so I'm gonna do my best to improve and read correctly. I've just done a note, just in case. To-do list. The entrance to the cave escaped in. There must be another way out. Yep, the good old, I need to escape. Uh, there could be anything living down here. Heroics are for Hollywood actors and fairy tales. I'm not taking any chances. If I face off against anything down here, I won't last a second. Caution and stealth are my only defenses now. If anyone or anything hears me, I'd be best of staying low and out of sight until I know whether it's or not it's a threat. Coaching by coaching will give me the chance to hide in the shadows. I will know I've got it right because of the blue tint to my vision. Plus, I should be quiet enough that I won't be heard unless something's right on top of me. Better remember to shut off any light source though. Okay, so you're telling me that I'm gonna be chased by something. My best bet is to hide for a couple seconds or so, perfectly still. That will make me properly hidden. Okay, I'm not sure I like that. So we're here, we have office, explosive, workshop, or storage. Let's go to... to, 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 to. Storage, I guess? Hello? Anyone here? I hope not. Let's use a flashlight a little bit, we can see further. room. So far so good. Let's use a glow stick a little bit. Look from the other side, that doesn't mean there's some answer inside. I can hear chattering. Thank God, maybe I can get some answer. Why won't he open the door? Hello? Knock knock. Okay. <laughs> what the heck is that? Uh, oh, batteries. Gotta have some batteries. Drugs. Drugs are bad. Huh? What the hell? What just happened? I don't know what was such a good idea. Yeah, it's probably in my brain now. Feels like a safe station, so... I might assume that's a safe station. <coughs> I may never get used to that. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's uh, the, the safe station of the game. We'll see. 
as we go. Uh, rocks. Maybe I can break that door. No. Nope. Nothing I can do. Oh, so I can move that. Interesting. Oh, shit. Ah, all right. Ah, fuck me, man. I need to go in there. And I cannot go back up. Oh, fuck. Yeah. That can't be good, man. Crawling in the holes again. Oh fuck! Christ, was that a spider? I don't like spiders. Yeah, man, I don't like them either. Fuck the spiders. Oh, I can hear them crawling. Oh fuck! Herbert said, "Luckily, it's mummy fire door. Uh, should have been helpful." Yep. I'm pretty happy it's dead. I hope. You better stay dead, man. Mm -mm. Nice butt. Okay. Let's not get distracted by the butt. Uh, uh, uh. Flares, notes. Is that a uh, spider nest? Oh, no. Does he hold back? <laughs> I like that much better. Day one, I begin this record, still in the hope that we, that the great work we have undertaken here might one day be of scientific value. Despite the chaos which have ensued in the six hours previous, my aim is to remain secure until what help there may be arrives. And to that end, I have barricaded myself into a small workshop area in the abandoned part of the mine. I hope that the meager furations here will keep me alive and that those I hide from will not jeopardize that. Perhaps this mine really is cursed. It's almost precisely 13 years since the incident that brought us here. And now, 13 years on, fate has struck again. Okay. So the workshop, huh? That might be your next destination. If I ever get out of here. Steam. Some fresh one, I know I've seen it happen. Okay, so avoid the steam. Perfect. Can I time that out to get to to get past it? <gasps> yeah, it's fine. Okay. Stop. When the side of the piece, I would say it looks like cake shots. Oh hell no. I hope it's just a pot, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna believe it's a pot. I look of some sort. Day 71. My earlier assumptions on the binning nature of cellmates may have been made in error. After a careful autopsy, I am concerned that there may be a small volume of natural chemicals stored in the stomach, which, if ingested regularly over a period of time, may become psychotropic or even lethal. My only real chance is to break out of here and raid any stashes of supply I can find. However, the evidence against such a move is insurmountable. First, I have no source of light. Second, I swore to myself I would not leave until I heard a human voice outside. Third, the spiders are so tasty. What the heck? Weirdo. Oh, oh shit. Uh, let's time that. Okay. Um, hammer time? Question mark? Yeah! Yeah! There we go. Perfect. Chest. Yep. Batteries. Gotta love the batteries. What are you? 
lighter gas. If only I had a lighter. Okay. Is that a wheel? Spin the wheel. Spin it. Spin it. I heard the steam going off, so I guess we are not worrying about steam anymore. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Now there was a way to the left that we needed to explore still. <coughs> Might be something ladder. Oh, can I get past the ladder? Dead end. Okay, so let me try the ladder in the trapdoor to see if I can use it to get up. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> what? Oh, shit. Dude, got fucked up up here. Oh no, man. Okay. Ha! Huh. Knew it. So smart. I think someone's right through here. Never seen this much blood before. I. That was my best chance to get some answers. Who else is still down here? I'm. Actually, oh, I missed that. There's a lighter. Oh, yeah. Okay. Lighter plus fuel equal fire. <laughs> Bugs equal bad. Okay, got it. So, fuel plus lighter. Should fire up now. Okay. It's filled up and ready to burn. Let's put that here. Oh, so I can use it on stuff. I guess I can light up stuff. Let's try this. Oh, nice. That's cool. Just like in Amnesia. Keys. Day 200. It has been some time since I recorded any findings in relation to the spiders with whom I have shared my existence from the past eight months, partly due to my unforced retreat from their basement territory. Not too long ago, their behavior became overtly aggressive, and so I have attempted to barricade the main entrance to their lair and secure myself within one of the smaller rooms above it, the only one with an operational door lock. The other reason is that I have been recovering from a minor operation, which I was forced to conduct myself without the aid of anesthetic. Even if I did have any anesthetic or surgical tools, I could not afford to be less than diligent in my work, so anesthetic was out. Surgical tools are well and good, but although it may be becoming whole and rusty, I still trust my pen knife to do the job just as well. The procedure itself was elementary enough, a simple amputation of a non vital organ. I began to notice a tick. What the heck? A thick glue like substance forming on my tongue, and I was forced to accept that it had become infected through constant toxin ingestion. Day 300 Another century of days comes and goes. It seems long ago since I escaped here. At some stage since my last entry, I attempted to return from whence I came. That from which I originally was fleeing seems a fate far worse than the one I now faced. However, in the time since I have arrived from the larger mine system, a cave-in has occurred, blocking any further progress. I was forced to return and accept whatever end life has in store for me. I still hear my aggressive little friend scratching on the door to my soul. Oh man, spiders, huh? Okay. Yuck, spider, not just spider I've ever seen, no shit. What's that? 
that. It looks like an internal organ, maybe an animal tongue. Yep, sure looks like it. And I can pick it up. Oh my god. Okay, nothing else here. Alright. So, do -do. Oh, that shit came through there. This hole is not large enough for a man that I'd go anywhere near it, even if it was. What burrowed out this tunnel? I don't want to know, man. What's that? Beef! Beef jerky! Okay. So, I think that's it for the storage room. Alright. Scary music. Oh yeah, I can light them now. Wait, I thought I could. Oh yeah, okay, there we go. <gasps> no! Fuck this! Oh! What are you? <gasps> I'm gonna try to armor his face if he comes near me. My heart racing, it didn't get more than within a few feet from my legs, but then I scared out. My fear of vision panicked me, and then I'm a goner. Fuck you, dog. Looks like a dog, at least, or a wolf, or something. Can I jump? Oh, yeah. Try to armor his face. Let's hope that works. Bring it, asshole. <coughs> Fuck you. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> got you. Oh, nope. Never mind. I'm gonna try that again for sure. I'm pretty sure it can die. Yeah, something is there. There we go. Fuck you, bitch. Come back here, coward. Just not seen this girl in my life. I can feel my heart racing from the gets switching. Okay, I read that already. Where are you? Where are you? Up. 
Not scared of you. That's right. Is he gone? I think he's gone. Looks like it's gone. Nice. We are safe for now. So it can't die. Oh. Fuck this. I hear it again. Okay, so... Fuck you, man. Where are you? I am this way, though. Workshop. That's where I need to go, I think. Up to the right, explosive to the left. I need to go in the office first, I think. I think I'm gonna go look at the office. It's like a safe room. I need a key. Okay, flare. Typewriter. Fuck you, typewriter. Okay, what's that? Back string. Okay, a key. Copenhagen Post, Monday, 17 August 1930. Psychotropic deposits at the bottom of death mine? Researcher at the University of Copenhagen have suggested that mine altering chemicals naturally soon into the rock, maybe causing the high maybe the cause of high suicide rates at a Greenland mine. The university which had recently been conducting studies into isolated communities first became interested in the workers of the northwestern lead mine last year. They discovered that even taking into account Greenland's naturally higher suicide rate, local figures for the last 100 years were abnormally right. An ad abnormally high, sorry. At 46 deaths per 100,000 populace compared to the national average of 29. On further investigation, expert diagnosed in many in many of the minors symptoms in common with the earlier stage of paranoid schizophrenia. This has prompted researchers to hypothesize the natural deposits of lysergic acid, a pH 4 formula recently discovered to have hallucinogenic properties, may be present in the rocks. Few lockers were conducted to to interview, but those agreed to speak had their own explanation. Inuit spirits, known as the Turn Turn Gate, la, live in the mountains. The university is awaiting the result of chemical testing. Studies continue. Okay. Let's see, August 15, 1945. 
Comment Bunker Emergency Hair Strip Zulu Weekly Report Another anormic about week in Greenland. Regular supply receives and our emergency drills carried out. Routine run of women is complete. Uh, one wounded. Oh oh. The one wounded figure is no one close to concert back in London. The German haven't extended their front line by 4,000 miles. Two of my men were caught manufacturing cherry bombs in a workshop Hamari and succeeded in blowing off a couple of fingers. I take partial responsibility for this, in that I allowed them access to the demolitions manual we keep in the storeroom. And I'm sure that's where they learned the ingredients. As I'm precautionary miser, I have now locked up that manual in the chest in my office, and I will keep the key on my person at all time. Needless to say, both men have been disciplined, and the injured man has been sent home for medical care. I cannot help but think that more suitable punishment will have been for him to stay out here, but the matter is out of my hands. The place is so disconnected sometimes. I feel as it war could, as a as if this war could end, and we might not even hear about it out here. Supply requisition order, dynamite, seven bayonets, blah blah blah. Reconditioning of the mine continues to progress. The structure is being fortified from the potential bomb damage, and excavation of previous caved-in area is going ahead. One point of curiosity is some kind of archaeological find, an artifact buried in the heart and discovered by one of the work teams. Later this evening, after martial duty, I shall take a closer look at the artifact. It appears to be man-made and may have working parts inside. I shall remove what looks like the front cover and see if I can discover the source of the light which constantly emanates from it. Chef and C.U.M. Major. Okay, so that artifact. The safe station. A man, an old man, clutching sometimes unseen, is strange and yet is no stranger, never seen before, still I know this man before me is Howard. I call him Father. Okay. It was different, but the same that time. Like, I had more contour, but over what? Hmm. Okay, so we have a mind controlling artifact. I guess the key we have is for this. Let's open the chest. Open sesame. What the fuck is that? Big book of explosives, 1923 edition. Chapter 1. Black match fuses. The black match fuse is one of the oldest, simplest and most reliable fuses used in modern pyrotechnics. It is easy to create, essentially consisting of just string and gunpowder, but be warned. The chemicals concerned will stain clothing, and as always, to concern is advised. Material required: string, preferably cotton, black gunpowder, and back string. Okay, so that's the back string we got. It's to make dynamite. Uh, the string should be coated with a thin layer of back string, which acts as an adhesive. The string is then carefully rolled in the gunpowder and left to dry at least a couple of minutes before use. Okay. Chapter 2 Dynamite. Invented by Alfred Nobel in 1866, dynamite is commonly used in construction, mining, and demolition. It has proved far safer to end than alternatives such as pure nitroglycerin, provided, that is, it has been properly stored. Over time, the explosive component of dynamite, supposedly made safe by the presence of the diatomaceous heart, has a tendency to weep making an whole box of the explosive liable to detonate on contact. Material required, one part of that thing, three part nitroglycerin, small amount of sodium carbonate, text unreadable, and then simply form into short stick and wrap in paper. Trinitrolutein, TNT. TNT was first discovered in 1863 by German chemist Joseph Wilbrand, but it, it took some years before it yielded its true potential. This was because of the difficulty making it explode and the lesser detonation in comparison to dynamite. The main advantage was discovered by the German Navy, who employed TNT's relative explosive stability in order to cause massive damage to British warships. Their torpedoes could be detonated inside a ship's armor, rather than exploding on contact as did other ships. Oh my god, so much reading. 
Armstrong mixture is included in this book as more of a point of interest than as a viable chemical mix. The formula exists as somewhat in a region in modern pyrotechnics, referenced by those knowledgeable enough to stay away from it, as death mix. Its incredible volatility makes it unsuitable for almost all potential application. Uh, but yeah, this mixture can be carefully and slowly mixed to minimize risk of to the chemist. So for we can substitute for some or all of the barium to slightly decrease sensitivity. Thank God we're done reading. <laughs> okay, so I think that's a great place to end it here. And we shall continue next time. So if you liked it, uh, consider liking, subscribe, leave comments, uh, advice. I take everything. So, on that note, see you next time. Bye-bye.